Uh, so we'll go to the next talk, which is a low-level laser. Yeah. How long? So was it in association with a second transplant, or was it strictly using the product? Oh, no, no, I did a second transplant. So I, the better result that you showed was a second transplant plus. Right. I truly believe that with surgery, the PRP and A cell makes a huge impact. As a standalone procedure without surgery, I'm not as convinced that it consistently blows my mind. Sometimes I get very minimal results. And what I'm trying to do now is have Amina, who works with me, do a hair mass index beforehand and afterwards because I want to quantify those results. So I'm still in the very early stages of looking at predictability outside of the confines of surgery. I'm sorry to make that clear in the talk. Um, but I am very convinced it works very well to enhance surgical outcomes. Does that, does that make a difference? Does, does that make sense? Okay. So uh, low level lasers, I want to make sure I'm staying on time. Yes, good. Okay. So low-level lasers, you know, I always thought this was like shark with laser beams, you know, coming out. It was like fantasy world. It didn't do anything. Uh, but the more I'm using it, the more I'm seeing that there's a very good role for patients, whether it's without medicine, and especially today when there's a lot of things on the lo online about finasteride, et cetera, where patients are wary about that they want to not use something that has a higher side effect profile, that they want to be using lasers. And I'm convinced that it works very, very well for my patients. So um, what is, how does this work? The, the history, the briefly, is in back in 1960, a Hungarian scientist was trying to look at whether um, in a shaved mice model whether, whether this cold light laser around 650 nanometers would help with uh, preventing cancer recurrence and he found that there was no difference but what he found was it helped with hair regrowth and so since that time they have been using um, more and more of, of uh, uh, lasers to, to, to grow hair or to, re, or to stabilize and restore hair loss. It is a low wattage okay, um, and it works really to stimulate an intracellular um, uh, enzyme called cytochrome C. There we go. And it helps with increase, enhancing gene activity, decreasing apoptosis, cell death, and enhance uh, cell activity and survival. The, um, there's a really good study, a really good review article by Sharon Keene in, I think it was in somewhere in 2014. I remember what, maybe it was last. Uh, three, uh, went over three issues. Yeah, we yeah, went over three issues. Yes, and it was really good just going through the differences, so I refer you to the forum, and that's another reason to join the ICHRS, because it goes through all these details. But a couple studies that have been out there to show efficacy was one was Kim et al., 2013. Um, they showed that using a helmet device for 20 minutes, there was statistically significant hair count improvement, but they failed to show um, a qualify, qual, uh, um, qualitative improvement uh, by patient observation. But then um, using a uh, multi-center sham device, double-blind, placebo-controlled uh, uh, prospective trial, um, they did a comb study and they did it three times, uh, they did it three times weekly in both men and women. And so some of the thoughts is maybe what have, could have happened with the earlier study was that they did it too frequently every day. And over a six-month period, they showed statistic, statistically significant hair count improvements, uh, and it didn't matter what kind of device they were using. And that was irrespective of sex and ethnicity and age, et cetera. Um, and this was a higher percentage compared to placebo. So there's various um, different products out there. I'm not here to advocate a, a brand or one product over another. This is part of, you know, this is just to give you some overview, and, and you can find out what's going to work for you in your clinical practice. It started uh, er, initially with very large, large devices that you had to go to the office, but as you know with anything that's out there, if you're not compliant with the, uh, with the use of the product, you're, it's not going to work, okay? So you need, and so driving to an office, you know, a few times a week is very, very difficult for most, most people. Uh, comb devices work very well, the studies have shown that as well, um, but there's a little bit more compliance that you have to comb through it, but there may be some efficacy because it may get closer to the scalp because the point of what, how the lasers work is they have to get closer to the scalp. It's not the tips of the hair, but down to the, the base of where the, where the, the, the the, the scalp is that works. There are different um, helmet devices out there. This one has 21 lasers and 30 LEDs. Uh, there's wired. Uh, this is a wired device. It's not wire, uh, wireless. And um, there's this is a, a newer model that's out there with 80 lasers, uh, wavelength at 678. There are supposedly no LEDs in this one. Another product here with 224 lasers, uh, 650 nanometers, uh, has a battery pack. There's a new wireless model that's out now. Uh, this one has 272 lasers. So, well, how many lasers does it matter? 
The problem with this is no real science to say this laser with a certain number of lasers is better than that one. Uh, so that's, that's a problem. But in general, what my protocol today is about 30 minutes, about three times a week or every other day. I just try to make it easy because if someone asked me about minoxidil, you know, is it once a day or twice a day? If, yeah, it's twice a day, but, you know, it's hard to do that. And so what I, tr I want patients to be compliant. So a pragmatic thing for me is Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 30 minutes. I try to mentally make it easy on their mind to see how easy this is. You're maybe, you know, uh, working in, uh, at home, cooking, watching TV or something like that. It could be very helpful for them. Uh, and so these are just, you know, uh, some results to, toward imp showing just thickness that's there. Um, and getting, and these are just with, with no other treatments other than laser. But I think that lasers are a, a powerful tool that can be used either in lieu of medications or as an adjunct. Now, why is an adjunct? Because remember what I said is that the medical therapies that are out there are helpful in, in a synergistic way and because they all tack the, the hair growth from a different angle. So I believe that there's many ways to help a patient and some people, there may be a cost barrier for some of these products. It could be a compliance issue, it could be a side effect question. And you're gonna help tailor that regimen for the person based on some of these constraints. And uh, hopefully that's a good introduction and at least to get you start to thinking about how to treat a patient not only surgically, but also in a non-surgical way.